What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm bringing you a review of the light novel Durarara by Ryogo Narita. Let's get this started. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, before we get started, I'm assuming that you have possibly clicked on this video just for the fact that you want to see what the light novel of Durarara has to offer. Let me just say this right now. I could be going into minor spoilers in the series of the first half of the uh, first season just for the fact that this book, Volume 1 of Durarara, only goes over episodes 1 through 12 of the first season of the anime. I'm just saying that right now. So if you haven't at least watched the first half of the first season of the anime, please go watch that now before you come back to this review because I don't really want to possibly give anybody any spoilers. Everybody good? We got that? Let's get into the review. The first volume of the light novel series, Durarara, was released in April 10th, 2004, and was only available for Japanese markets, but finally, thanks to Yen Press, we finally have a nice English translation. They published this book on July 21st, 2015. So where do I begin when it comes to the plot of Durarara? Now, that is a hard question for me to basically explain to you, but I will try my best. So basically, this novel, Durarara, takes place in the district of Tokyo in the city of Ikubukuro, and apparently there has been a lot of kidnappings, suicides, disappearances, human trafficking, rumors of human experimentation going around the town, and apparently there has also been a rumor that there has been a headless fairy riding around in a motorcycle around the city. Now when it comes to the novel, you're really not going to find a particular main character that is pretty much the protagonist of the series. Be the reason for that is because technically this novel focuses on so many characters and each character has basically their own story arc to them that basically everyone that you will meet in the city of Ikubukoro in this novel is going to be a main character and plays a vital importance to the novel because what this novel does is basically it, it goes over with each chapter each character is introduced and what their backstory and relationship to other characters are and then the final chapter of this novel fleshes out into one big story and then everything starts to come together at first in this novel you're probably gonna be like what is going on but then at the end of the novel you're gonna be like Wow, I can't believe I didn't see that coming. Durarara tends to focus on a particular theme throughout the novel, and this theme is love. Now, it's not your stereotypical love that you will find in any romance novel per se, although while it does focus on love, it perceives love as something that is dark, cold, twisted, violent, and sometimes even destructive. And judging by all the characters in the novel, they have all their own version of what love is to them, what their own perception of what love is, and kind of like their own philosophy that they abide to. But because of the theme that runs out throughout the entire novel, it basically gives each character a sort of corrupted quality to them, per se. For example, one of the characters, Mikado Ryogami, we find out later in the book that he has some sort of dark side to him. Now, for the most part, between the novel and the anime's differences between the two, I know that the novel is the original source material, and that is how Durarara the anime came to be. It was from the light novel series, just in case I haven't really gone over that yet. But yeah, the light novel series is what inspired the anime, but for the most part, the anime follows everything from this novel to a T. I mean, there's really only minor differences between what goes on in the novel and the anime, and I will list them right now. I think the book describes more of a in-depth view into some of the characters in the novel and also gives more of a in-depth view into basically the city of Ikubokoro itself as opposed to the anime. There's only like really only a minor difference and that's basically that this novel gives more of a little bit more description between the backstories of the characters, the type of people they are, and you know basically what their name stands for, which I thought was pretty cool. For example, Mikuro Ryagami's name actually translates to Emperor of the Peak of Dragons, and Isaiah's name actually is a combination of Isaiah, one of the prophets from the Bible, and the saying of one who approaches. It's just the little things that matter that can really make you learn and understand some of these characters a lot more enjoyable. Also, by the end of the novel, you will probably come across the afterword right here. Um, now, the afterword has no particular relationship to the story whatsoever of Durarara, 
but it's pretty cool because it does give a little biography by the author of the novel, Ryogo Narita, and he actually gives kind of like a little biography on basically his inspiration behind the creation of the RR and how it came to be, which I thought was pretty interesting. Also, here is some of the illustrations in the book. As of right now, the light novel series of Durarara has officially ended in Japan. There are 13 volumes total, but I am very, very thankful for that Yen Press has finally gone out of their way to actually publish the English translation, the official English translation, might I add, of the Durarara series. Um, I really want to pick up volume 2 of the light novel series because I know right now there's only 1 and 2 available. 3 is going to be coming out a little bit later, I think next year. But I really want to get into the next volume of Durara to see what actually happens next. But I know that if you have been on my channel and have been watching my live reactions to the Durara series, my fans will probably get mad at me for that, um, for spoiling myself, really. But, you know, I really can't wait uh, to get the next novel of Durara. Like I said, I'm going to finish up the live reactions to uh, the rest of the first season, and then I will get the second volume of the series, do a review on that, and obviously get into the second season of Durarara. Alrighty guys, I think that about does it for my review of the first volume of the light novel series Durarara. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like this video, please give it a like and let me know in the comments down below if there are any particular light novels you would like for me to review in the near future. And also, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that the anime is superior to the light novel or is the light novel superior to the anime? What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments down below. And also, if you want to stay up to date to my future content, Please hit that red subscribe button below and you will never miss a video from me. That about does it for the video guys and I will catch you guys in the next one. Catch you guys next time.